Now that we're in the middle of the TV season, we're pushing out reviews left and right. And today, we'll be looking at the Samsung Q68. It's the entry-level model in Samsung's QLED lineup for this year, and the successor to last year's Q60T. But is it a worthy successor? And how does it compare to others in its price bracket? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best products for your needs. We'll start off by looking at the build quality and style. Next, we'll evaluate the picture quality and what it means for the viewing experience. We'll then move on to the motion and gaming performance and finish by comparing it against the competition, followed by our conclusion. If you'd like to skip straight to our test results, then see the links in the description below. We bought the 55-inch model to test, but it's also available in other sizes ranging from 43 to 85 inches. We expect our review to be valid for other variants available in North America. There's also the Q6D series available at Costco, but only in certain sizes. And now for the design. Even though it's an entry-level TV, it looks pretty nice for a model in its price range. It has a simple and minimalist design with thin borders all around. Like many of Samsung's models this year, it's very thin, thinner than last year's Q60T. It's fairly well built too. Even though it's entirely made of plastic that doesn't feel that premium, it's sturdy overall. Looking at its stand, you can see here how it's adjustable, and this is what it looks like at its lowest setting. It won't sit flush against the table, but it's still low enough so it doesn't take up much vertical space. The stand also seems to be new for Samsung TVs in 2021, and even at that, not many models have it. On the back, it has a nice brushed plastic finish, and it looks a bit more premium than last year's models. For cable management, there are clips on the legs and tracks along the back to help guide your cables towards the inputs. This helps you keep the setup clean, and you won't have cables dangling everywhere. If you want to wall mount it, there's also a vase mount. Next, let's check out the smart features and interface. We were impressed with the Tizen OS interface this year because it feels even smoother and quicker than the previous models. The version for the Q60A has a few less features than the higher end models like the Q70A or Q80A, but it still functions very well overall. The App Store also has a large selection of apps, and they run smoothly. Unfortunately, there are some ads that can't be disabled in the App Store and on the home page. Now, let's look at the remote. Samsung released a redesigned remote for their 2021 QLEDs. It has the same quick access buttons for Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Samsung TV Plus as previous years. But the main change is that it doesn't use disposable batteries. Instead, there's a built-in battery that you can charge using the solar panel on the back. If that's not an option, you can charge it with a USB-C cable, but oddly enough, it doesn't come with one. The remote has a built-in microphone for voice control. You can use either Bixby, Alexa, or Google as a voice assistant. With the assistant, you can ask the TV to do most basic demands, like changing inputs or opening apps, but you can't search for specific content in apps. Open YouTube. Open Netflix. Close Netflix. Now we'll move on to the picture quality. We'll be comparing it to currently available TVs, but competing models may change as new TVs are released throughout the year. For an updated comparison with new models as we buy and test them, see the review page on our website, which is linked below. Let's start off with the contrast, which is very important to picture quality. The Q60A has a VA panel with an excellent native contrast ratio of over 4600 to 1. This means that it displays pretty deep blacks, even when viewed in a dark room. Sadly, it doesn't have a local dimming feature to improve perceived contrast, but since local dimming can really be hit or miss, this may not be an issue to some people. Now let's check out the brightness, which is important if you tend to watch TV in a bright room, because you want something that gets bright enough to combat glare. In SDR, this TV has a great peak brightness, and it maintains its brightness consistently across different content. This is a welcome improvement over last year's model, which had a significant drop in brightness for small highlight detail. In our test patterns, we measured around 450 nits and just over 430 nits in our real scene test. This should be good enough to fight glare in most well-lit rooms, but we suggest avoid placing it in a room with direct sunlight because its reflection handling isn't the best. Speaking of reflection handling, it's decent. 
Unlike Samsung's flagship QLED models, this TV doesn't have as strong of an anti-reflective layer, so the reflections are more pronounced. It should be good enough for a room with a few light sources, but don't place it opposite of a window, as there can be too much glare. This TV doesn't have a wide viewing angle layer, so there's no rainbow effect in the reflections, which can be distracting. Although lack of this layer hurts viewing angle performance, as we'll see later on. Moving on to HDR brightness, this TV is just okay. Sadly, it doesn't get much brighter in HDR than in SDR. We measured around 470 nits in our test windows and 460 nits in the real scene highlight. This means that highlights in HDR don't pop as they should, which is disappointing for fans of HDR content. This is about the same as last year's Q60T, except there isn't a drop in brightness in highlights on this year's model. As part of our recent test bench update, we're also testing for HDR brightness in game mode. As the name suggests, this is important if you tend to play HDR games. As for this TV, it gets a bit brighter in game mode than outside of it. We measured nearly 490 nits in most test windows and 470 nits in the real scene highlight. However, in game mode, there's aggressive frame dimming and small highlights are noticeably more dim. So with HDR gaming, highlights aren't going to pop like they're supposed to. Moving on to the uniformity. Having a TV with good uniformity is important when there are large areas of uniform color, such as if you use it as a PC monitor. It's also noticeable in sports, like with a hockey rink or basketball court. This TV has decent gray uniformity. The edges of the screen have been yetting, and there's some dirty screen effect in the center, which could get distracting during sports. In terms of black uniformity, it's excellent. This is great for watching dark scenes with small bright objects. There's a bit of clouding on our unit, but it's not too noticeable. As mentioned, there's no local dimming feature to improve the uniformity, but most people shouldn't have an issue based off our unit. Keep in mind that uniformity can vary between units, so your experience might be different from ours. Now let's check out the viewing angles. Viewing angles are important if you have a wide seating arrangement because you want the image to remain accurate when viewed from the side. Like with most VA panels, the Q60A has narrow viewing angles. This means that the image is visibly inaccurate when viewed off center. So it's not the best pick for an open living room and is more suited for head-on viewing. Out of the box, this TV is very accurate. Most colors and the white balance are only slightly inaccurate, but it's not enough that you'll notice. Color temperature is on the cold side, so the image has a slight bluish tint to it, but some people may actually prefer this. Gamma also tracks slightly brighter than it should. Most Samsungs we've tested in 2021 have great accuracy out of the box, so this is nothing new from this brand. For most people, this should be good enough so that you don't have to get the TV calibrated. However, keep in mind that accuracy can vary between units, so your experience may be different. Now let's take a look at the color gamut, which is the range of colors a TV can display. A wide gamut is important for HDR content, so you can see all the vivid hues used in HDR. The Q60A has a wide color gamut, covering just over 90% of the DCI P3 color space, which is the color space most often used with HDR content. So colors and shades will really pop in HDR. It's actually a nice improvement over the Q60A. It also has a good color volume. It displays deep colors thanks to its excellent contrast, but struggles with brighter colors due to its limited brightness. For gradient handling, the TV is good. Gradient handling is how finely different colors that are similar can be displayed. If a TV performs poorly with gradation, you'll notice banding in scenes with gradients, such as a sunset. With this TV, there's a bit of banding in most colors, and it's most noticeable with greens and reds. If you want to improve gradients a bit, you can enable the noise reduction setting, although this runs the risk of possibly losing out on fine details. By the way, if you enjoy our content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. By subscribing, you're helping us reach a wider audience and in turn helping us help you find the best products for your needs. Now let's move on to the motion and gaming performance, starting with response time. This is the time it takes for a pixel to change from one color to the next, and it affects the appearance of motion. A slow response time causes a blurry trail behind fast-moving objects, known as ghosting. The Q60A's response time is quicker than the Q60T, but it's only just okay. This means that motion looks smooth for the most part, but you may still notice some ghosting. Like most Samsung TVs, this TV uses pulse width modulation, or PWM, to dim its backlight. This means the backlight flickers at all times. It flickers at 480 Hz in the movie picture mode, which shouldn't be too noticeable for most people. However, it flickers at 120 Hz in the dynamic, standard, or natural picture modes, 
or if you enable picture clarity. At this frequency, it could be more noticeable and could also cause image duplication with fast moving content. Even though flicker can cause motion artifacts, it can also be used to improve motion clarity, which is called black frame insertion. BFI reduces persistence blur by strobing the backlight in sync with the refresh rate. You can learn more about how that works here. With the Q60A, the LED clear motion setting turns on the BFI to 60 Hz. However, the timing is quite bad, which results in image duplication and can be distracting. Also, enabling BFI makes the screen more dim and can cause eye strain, so we don't recommend using it on this TV. With lower frame rate content, you can also improve the appearance of motion with the motion interpolation feature. What this does is increase the frame rate of the content to match the TV's 60 Hz refresh rate. It can interpolate 30 FPS content up to 60 FPS if you set judder reduction to 10 in the picture clarity settings. This isn't for everyone, and you can learn more about the motion interpolation or soap opera effect here. As mentioned before, this TV doesn't support VRR. The Q60A is the only Samsung QLED this year to not have any VRR support. If you want that, then check out the higher up Q70A or Q80A. All the ports can be found in the cutout section on the back. Here, there are a total of three HDMI inputs, and they all support HDMI 2.0. There's no HDMI 2.1, but that's fine since this TV lacks any features that could really take advantage of it, such as 120 Hz or VRR. If you want those features, then check out the Q70A. With these HDMI ports, the TV supports 1080p and 4K content up to 60 Hz. However, it seems to have an issue when displaying 1440p content properly. This is unexpected because its predecessor, the Q60T, is able to do it, so it may be fixed in a future firmware update. For HDR, the Q60A supports HDR10 and HDR10+. However, Samsung TVs don't support Dolby Vision, which is disappointing if you tend to watch HDR content on streaming apps like Netflix. In these cases, the HDR content will be limited to the HDR10 format. For audio pass-through, it supports ARC and eARC, and Dolby Digital and Dolby Atmos, but not DTS or DTS-X. As for the rest of the port, there's two USBs, an Ethernet port, a TV tuner, and an optical audio out. Thankfully, the Q60A has incredibly low input lag, as long as you're in game mode. This is typical of Samsung TVs, and it's fantastic for gamers. You shouldn't notice any delay, and games will feel responsive. It also has support for Auto Low Latency Mode, or ALLM. This allows the TV to switch into game mode to get low input lag when a game from a compatible device is launched. So you'll be able to easily jump into your game without adjusting any settings. For the latest consoles, the TV is limited to 60 Hertz and doesn't support HDMI 2.1. So it doesn't support any 120 FPS games. That said, there aren't any issues when playing 4K games at 60 Hertz from either the PS5 or Xbox Series X, including in HDR. Now let's talk about the sound quality. The sound is passable, but actually worse than its predecessor. Maybe this is because of the thinner TV, which means less space for speakers, although we can't say for sure. One thing that stands out is the lack of bass. It has a low frequency extension of about 127 Hertz, which is poor even for a TV. Also, the distortion is pretty bad, much worse than last year's model. A soundbar or speaker system would be a good investment here. So that's it. The Samsung Q60A is a decent entry-level QLED. It performs best in dark rooms thanks to its excellent contrast ratio and black uniformity. However, it lacks many features like local dimming and VRR, and it doesn't get very bright in HDR. Compared to last year's Q60T, the Q60A is improved a bit in some areas, but performs worse in others. The Q60A has a quicker response time for better motion, and the built-in OS feels a bit better to navigate. However, the Q60T has a better contrast ratio and sound quality. Choosing one over the other really comes down to which one you can find and which is cheaper. The Q60A is a major step down from the next TV in Samsung's QLED lineup, the Q70A. The Q70A has many more features like a 120Hz panel with HDMI 2.1 and VRR support. It also has a much quicker response time than the Q60A, making it a better choice for gaming. If you want those features and are willing to spend the extra money, go for the Q70A. So what do you think of the Q60A? Is the price to performance right for you? 
or will you be considering other options? Let us know what you think below. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.